Welcome to the Raise Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. We're here to raise your confidence and inspire your creativity. Each episode, we will have a different guest who will be discussing our Raise Word. The Raise Word is a word that will encourage you or empower you and at times inspire you to explore the word a little more for yourself. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to The Raise Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. We have had some fantastic guests so far in season three, but this time we have literally um, a double whammy. We have two people that are literally on the rise at the moment, which is very fitting for our episode, which is going to touch a little bit on the coronation of His Majesty as well. So can I introduce you to uh, pop royalty Gemma and Howard (laughs) Francis? Good morning. Hey, Hello. morning. It's a great morning. introduction. I like that. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? We are good. We are tired. Yeah, we're tired, but we're, we're but okay. it's all amazing because we've just had a fantastic um ten days or so. Um, absolutely brilliant. Super. All right, we're gonna right dive into that in just a second. But before we do that, um, Gemma and then Howard, what yeah. does the word rise mean to you? It's really means a lot to us at the moment because um, we're from the Big Sing um, and our community choirs. We've been talking a lot about rising together Um, as we've come out of COVID and a period where we weren't allowed to sing and so much restrictions on us and on our choirs. We have been singing about how we're going to rise together. Mm. And we've been doing that for the last couple of years. And we've got a song um, actually by King and Country featuring Kirk Franklin that says when we rise, we will rise, rise together. together. So it's actually been a really important word for us and our choirs, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, rise, you can put that to the individual as well, like in our choirs and who have been through so much. Yeah. And we've risen, they've risen with us. Yeah. They've risen in their own individual circumstances to where they're at now, full of confidence and, and really loving life a lot more yeah. just through singing. Yeah. Just through singing and finding a family within the choir. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's fantastic. I don't normally mm. do this, but um, with your permission, I want to just pop something personal into all of that mix because um Gemma and I do something called the Lions together. Gemma, you're a fully fledged lion. I was just a little lion <laughs> cub. <laughs> um, a Christian um project organization kind of mission to get Christian businesses up and going um and I was part of that and learning how to be a better kind of business woman and owner um but I got long COVID and so I was very very poorly but at the graduation gym the choir sang together this song that you're talking about uh and I think yeah. maybe we'd be able to play I don't know five seconds or so of it I'll have to check legal stuff but um As your choir sang that, the part of me that, to be honest, had not laid the choir down, but pretty much nailed it into the ground because I just thought, I'm so poorly, I'm never going to be able to get this choir back up and running again, rose. It absolutely rose as your choir sang. And I think, I don't know if you remember this, Jen, but I remember it was chucking it down with rain outside. And I came to you and I just said, that song, that song is going to be something to me. And now my own community choir is back. I am managing as best I can, but that song and your determination to get your choir singing again enabled me to rise. So apologies that I've gotten straight to myself at the beginning. That's fantastic. But it just seems so pertinent to yeah. that whole rising thing. Um mm. So, yeah, I'm so excited to talk about this word. Can you, let's dial back right to the beginning of how this big thing started. Take us through a bit of that journey and and the beginning of the the rise. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. So we actually started 12 years ago now. Um, And at the time, we were both professional musicians and Howard was touring with people like Westlife and Will Young and Blue. 
And I was singing with London Community Gospel Choir. And so I was on the road all the time with them. It was an amazing job and an amazing opportunity to sing gospel music to people in other countries, other religions. There was no barriers, like music broke through all barriers. Yeah. And, you know, we were spreading the word through gospel music. And, you know, we just, just thought had a really strong call in one day that we needed to do something for our community because yeah. all we did was we just went home and slept and then we went off traveling again yeah yeah um so we thought you know what we'll just start a choir and um it was only supposed to be a little six-week project and it was just <laughs> something you know just to fulfill that calling really yeah. yeah um and so we did it and we got 45 people through the door and they performed at their little carnival and they did amazing and these were just normal people from the community never done singing before really they just had an urge in them that they wanted to do singing and it became like a little choir family yeah um and they were telling us stories every week of how they were overcoming depression and isolation and loneliness and you know they were creating new friends and they came to us at the end of the six-week project and said you just can't stop this you know <laughs> mm. we love it so much and it's done so much for us and that's when we saw the power of music really for ourselves yeah. because mm. then we saw how music especially gospel music was uniting people uniting the community and really breaking through in people's lives and, and making massive changes and we just knew that you know god was given us something amazing and a special calling so we just carried it on didn't yeah, we yeah sure did and so from a little town called Whitton, which was the first choir then we went next door to the next town which was Malden mm -hmm. and started one there and then that's that's when it started to spread yeah you know yeah. from there on it just um yeah the, the reaction that we've been getting was like yeah we we want a choir in this area and that area so that's what we did yeah, yeah and then the parents wanted something for the kids, the kids so, yeah, so we started little sing choirs and then you know, the parents with the babies wanted something, so we started tiny, <laughs> tiny sing. sing. Yeah. And it was just about getting music into all of the community, from the youngest right up to the oldest. And, you know, it all just happened organically. And we were still doing our jobs at this mm. point, still mm. full-time musicians. So, you know, it got to a point where Big Sing was growing so fast, we had to make a decision and a real leap of faith, I guess, as to what we're going to do with this. Were we going to, you know, sacrifice our careers that we absolutely loved and had an amazing time, you know, especially me? Um, or were we going to, and, and were we going to jump into Big Sing? And so that's when God really tested us and said, what are you going to do? <laughs> and so we just did the leap of faith. We still then, did. We leapt right into it. We leapt it. right into <laughs> it. And I gave up my job at LCGC, which was my dream job. Mm. And, uh, you know, Howard didn't go on tour as much. That was a sacrifice for him. Yeah. That uh, he could pick and choose. He still does professional. He's still yeah, a professional still, musician. Yeah, I still play a lot. But um, I pick and choose what I do more now sure. than I did before. Plus, uh, you know, I've got my beautiful wife and my family. So I don't want to be away like I was before. I would be yeah. away for months. You yeah, know? yeah. So I've actually turned down jobs, yeah. you know, quite recently just to just, stay. Yeah, and so that we can do big singer as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. then, you know, we did that leap of faith and that's when God really honoured us. And we he grew the big thing. We had choirs every night. Wow. Across Essex. How did we do that? Yeah, <laughs> we were really Because we, we ran it all. Yeah. It was us. Yeah. yeah. You know, so if there was five choirs, we were doing the five choirs. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was amazing. And God really blessed us and really honoured us through that leap mm. of faith. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. So just um, when you say about, you know, you were being on the road and you were touring and that kind of thing, what kind of things did you notice about the rise of other people and celebrity and stuff like that? Was there anything that you particularly noticed um, uh, kind of around that, that that meant that people rose quickly or maybe fell? Yeah, I mean, obviously with sung with quite a lot of celebrities um we've and I think for me my, the best experience was when um LCGC we went to Russia and it was the first time a gospel choir was ever allowed in the country wow. so we, we made history because you know singing and choirs and re especially relig religious choirs were not allowed in Russia yeah 
So that was right at the beginning when we would just got together and um that was a ground making moment for for the for LCGC, but not only that, but for history to allow yeah. us to actually go into Russia yeah. and we did concerts and and I remember we had to be really security conscious. You know, we weren't just yeah. allowed to just go and walk on the streets. We had to make sure that we were being protected because there was still a little bit of opposition about a gospel choir <clears throat> coming into Russia. Um but God protected us, and and I felt that was a really big rise in, you know, gospel music and breaking free barriers, yeah, yeah, uh, political barriers, and you know, just changing a little bit of culture. And we just felt honoured to be able to be part of that. Yeah, wow, yeah, that is a real rise, isn't it? It's a rise in all, all kinds of kind of different ways. Howard, did you notice anything with particular groups that you worked with in? like in the in the way that people interacted and was a one person that kind of rose above the other without any names but <laughs> <laughs> well you know in the music industry it's a very fickle industry anyway um and sometimes it really is about how much money is put into you yeah. do you know what I mean and, uh, yeah, yeah. it's not about it's not about your faith sometimes it's not about that but I have to say though I would say that I a lot of the work I got was because of what I offered and what how I made their music rise okay in a, even in the spiritual sense because I'm coming from a, a gospel background so what I play is quite I would say quite spiritual what I yeah, do yeah. you know what I mean and they they don't understand it but they hear it they feel it do you know what I mean in the yeah. way I play their songs which gives it elevates them and elevates the music and gives it a special something you know yeah. what I mean? So a lot of the time, a lot of the work I got was because of what I actually brought to it, how I made their music rise in a certain way, in a spiritual aspect, even though they didn't understand it, but they felt it. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You literally, um, I don't know, but I'm sure this is the same for you. When I play music um, or sing a particular song and the lyrics, you feel your spirit rise, don't you? You feel something within you kind of rising mm. and and ta like taking over the... The definitely. Song. definitely. I mean, it's a, it's a spiritual thing. Yeah. It speaks to a part of you that that language can't, you know what I mean? I mean, those notes, those frequencies, you know, the way we're built and the way we receive it, you know, is yeah. very on a high level, really is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Take me back a little bit to um, kind of earlier on in life. Were there times where you felt that... Um, God was calling you to something higher before you kind of had all these careers and things like that? Um, yeah, so when I, well, when I, before I joined London Community Gospel Choir, I was at university um, doing a marketing degree and I just knew that God was calling me to something unusual. And, you know, music had always been a part of my life, but in, I never saw it as a career. Right. I always thought that business was my career, you know, go to uni, get a marketing degree. But I always did music, like music outside of um, studying was just my life. You know, at church, I was involved in loads of music. I was involved in choirs from the age of seven. Yeah. So I think going through university in that period when um, I left uni and just really said to God, right, what is it that you want me to do? And I just felt the calling of being being called to music, even though I'd just done a business degree. And it's interesting how God made those two paths cross. Yeah, because yeah. when I left university, that's when I met LCGC. And they said to me, oh, do you want to come and do some work experience for us in the office? And so that's what I did. And that summer after uni, I just went and did work experience for them, setting up their marketing department. And I just thought that was going to be like a little summer job. And before I knew it, they were asking me to join the choir and it turned into a full time job. So God really led me into that role. Um, and, and I knew that that was a higher calling than what I had envisioned myself. So, yeah, I think from that that time in my life, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Well, f for me, it was always music. Yeah, <laughs> Do you yeah. know, what I mean? I, it was always music from I can remember there's nothing that I wanted to do more than music. And my my father saw that in me as well. Mm. And he went and bought me a piano, a piano, which he locked up in the front room because 
<laughs> back in the day, yes. In, in our <laughs> that culture, sounds counterintuitive. <laughs> yeah, no, because in our culture, in our culture, the front room was the lounge was somewhere you didn't go. Okay. You only took visitors there. Okay. Who came to the house? So right. he put the piano in there. <laughs> I know it's strange, isn't it? So he put the piano in there, and I couldn't touch that piano for ages. But like I said, um, it, p- music was always something in me. I never wanted to do anything else. Um, and it all stemmed from London Community Gospel Choir as well, because I was in that when it first started. Uh, but leading up to that, I was always playing in church. Um, I had little jobs and stuff like that. Like before, I was doing engineering, actually, diesel engineering. Um, so because I was really good with my hands and stuff like that. Yeah. So I was doing that. I did an apprenticeship and and that was going fine. But to be honest, music, once that took hold of me, that was always the case. That was always in my soul, in my heart. Yeah. And went for it. The, the, the doors opened, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you just take me back, though, Howard? So the piano was locked in the room. How? <laughs> this is important. <laughs> and yeah. I've got a... It's quite exciting. So the piano was locked in the room. How long was it until you were allowed to play it? Oh, gosh. You're talking about from the time my, time my dad got the piano, a good six months or so. Okay. <sighs> And we couldn't go into that room. We just could not go into that room. And it, it's just a culture thing. It's a culture yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How did that feel? So you oh, knew that man, there was, was something just... there that was about <laughs> to, like, set your life on fire, but you couldn't Oh, touch my it. gosh. Yeah, and I knew he bought it for me. He bought it for me. Uh-huh. But he made me wait. He made me wait. Wow. <laughs> so when he used to go out, he used to go out, I should try the door to see if he might have, you know, forgotten to, <laughs> to lock it. <laughs> Contraband piano playing. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it was always locked. It was always locked. He knew what he was doing. So my hunger was like going through the roof, you know, for it, you know. But eventually he he op- opened the door and I went in and I just had a great time in that front room. Now, you see, this just does something because... I said at the top of the episode that I did want to link it a little bit to the coronation. And as a podcast interviewer, you don't want to make a tenuous link. But I've been, I was thinking about, you know, Prince Charles, who's now the king. And the, just that idea of the waiting and knowing that at some point it's going to happen. Oh, yes, and now yeah, you yeah. saying about the piano and being locked in that room and that <laughs> feeling of knowing something's yeah. about to happen. Um, yeah just yeah I see your point yeah yeah yes yeah. and yes. I wonder how yes it was a cultural thing but I wonder how much your dad knew that you needed that hunger and that in six months <laughs> yeah, it may yeah. be if you'd gone in straight away how old how old were you this is oh gosh I, I must have been early teens okay okay because I thought if you were a bit younger you see when I was early young teens. I had a piano very early the, teens yeah. yeah one of the first things I did was I drew the notes on the piano that's not good is it oh, okay. I, I wrote the notes <laughs> on the piano but I was little you see all right but, yeah 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 um yeah it's that kind of respect all those months of waiting must have built such a respect oh, tell, and oh, a desire it sure did it sure did it sure did, and and your point, you know, with the with Prince Charles or King Charles, sorry, yeah. you know, him waiting yeah. patiently for his time to come. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yes, mm-hmm. it really does. Uh, yeah, yeah. The two really mesh. Yeah, and and then to to go a step further as Christians, I've often thought about the life of Jesus and how he was just waiting to to die. He knew that his ultimate thing was to die, and yet. Once he died, he was to rise. And that was his big, you know, right. swan song. And yeah. um, I just find that really exciting. I think people forget that. I think when they say see people in high places, they forget the bit in between, the bit where you mm-hmm. have to um, do the graft. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, take that time to wait and see what's about to happen what's about to happen Mm -hmm. next how cool are Gemma and Howard it's brilliant to hear how 
they are rising. If you want to hear their Britain's Got Talent audition, don't forget to listen all the way to the end. And if you like what we do here at the Rays podcast, please give us a five star rating on your favourite music platform. Back to the episode. So we're just talking about that expectancy and expectation and waiting and the difficult bit before rising. Gem, can you just take us through the time over COVID? Because that was a time of waiting for you, wasn't it? And the choir. Yeah, it was a really difficult time as it was for everyone, but because we were singing with a thousand people a week before lockdown. And so, you know, overnight it felt like we were just shut down. Yeah. Um, our groups and our choirs just couldn't run. And we was doing, we was at the top of our game then, you know, we was had never had so many people sing with us. We'd just moved to the Midlands to expand the choirs up here. Mm. Uh, and we just felt like it was a massive, massive kick in the teeth. Mm. At the beginning, we didn't know how long, no one knew how long lockdown was going to be. We thought it'd be a few weeks. We'd just get for a few weeks. Those weeks turn into months. We tried to get everybody online. Yeah. Um, the online singing is completely different to being yeah. together, hearing each other and having that community. And, you know, the big thing is all about community. It is about singing. It is about achieving amazing things. But in the heart of it, it's about community and bringing mm. people together. And when you're just sat at your computer by yourself, singing to yourself, yeah. um, or you see people online, you can't hear them. It was just so tough. But mm. what we learned in that period was that God never left our side. Yeah. And even we felt like the whole world was ending. We felt like the choirs were nearly ending because yeah. at the beginning we didn't have any government support. So financially we was just by ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't until much later, like six months down the road that we actually started getting some grants to help us survive. Yeah. So it, we felt like, you know, we was really, really desperate. We didn't know how we were going to survive, but you know, God, did not let us drown in those mm. waters. He basically provided for us every step of the way. And just as we thought we didn't have enough money to pay that month's bills, somehow some money would come in. Wow. And we could tell you month after month how he provided. Mm. And it was a time of waiting, of trusting big time. <clears throat> and, you know, I'm not a very patient person. <laughs> so for me, it was, and for Howard, it was just really <laughs> tough because we just wanted everything to be fixed and we wanted to get back, but we couldn't because of, you know, we was in lockdowns. And even when we came out of lockdowns, you know, we still had restrictions, yeah. you know, we had to sing two meters apart, we had to sing outside, we had to sing with masks mm. and people didn't want to do that. They just wanted normal life yeah, back. And yeah. Everybody came back straight away because they were scared. Yeah. Of, of coming and singing the government had told us we couldn't sing for so long so yeah. it really took you know we was working really hard even last year 2022 <laughs> rebuilding working five times as hard to get everything back it wasn't until November last year really that we had the numbers back that we did before COVID like yeah. pre-COVID numbers yeah. Yeah. um and that's when we God really just he, he kept giving us that verse um, that everything that has been taken away from you will be restored. I can't remember yeah. where it is in yeah. the Bible, but that verse yeah. kept, it was like his promise to get us through it. Mm. And, um, you know, we got to November and I felt like God restored our numbers. But then not only did he restore us our numbers, but then he gave us an amazing opportunity to rise in in our in in our um and just be able to have more exposure so we got a call from britain's got talent wow. and they said oh do you want to come on the show and you know we'd only literally just got our numbers back at this point mm -hmm. and i said to howard you know this would be an amazing opportunity just to get give us an amazing platform yeah. if we got on tv mm -hmm. just think how many people would see us mm -hmm. um so we applied didn't we and um, we went through the journey of britain's got talent and I feel like God gave us that amazing opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like he was saying, look, guys, you've hung on to this promise that I've given you. And now here's, here's your reward. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Listen, mm -hmm. we went on Britain's Got Talent. It was aired a couple of weekends ago and 5.5 million people saw us on wow. the show. 
tuned in to watch the show. Millions of people have seen us on, on social media. YouTube has got nearly 500,000 views. Wow. I mean, what bigger platform could we have been given to yeah. show the big thing and what we do? It's been an absolute miracle yeah. and God has turned it around big time. Yeah. 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 And and Howard, am I right in thinking that you worked with Alicia Dixon? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Some, uh, before Alicia was on TV and, and being a presenter and stuff, uh, she was in a group called Mystique. Yeah. Um, which was like a dance R&B garage band. And um, I was playing keyboards and being, I was actually the musical director for her. Right. Wow. As well for the band for a little while. So um, we built a really good relationship from that point of view. And then even after she left the band, I worked with her after that, writing some songs um, with a guy called DJ Swerve. Yeah. I know all this stuff is probably going over your head, but yeah. So, um, no, it's cool. Yeah. So, so we definitely over the years um, kn knew each other. And what was great is when she saw me, because um, I wasn't making a big thing of it when yeah. we got on the program. Yeah. Well, but, we couldn't tell anyone. Couldn't tell anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, but when she saw me on the program, she said, oh, Howard, this was it before we went on stage even. Yeah. And yeah. she remembered me clearly, you know, which was really, really nice. Really, yeah. really nice. Yeah. But what's funny is that all the newspaper have kind of zoomed in on that aspect of things. You know yeah. what I mean? They've really blown it up yeah. to be something major when it's, you know, we just knew each other. That's all. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder what she thought about... Um, seeing you in that context of the choirs though that must have been really cool to see you in a different yeah different well way. she's only seen me as a keyboard player behind yeah. all these other stars and here's me now behind a, a choir yeah. um, and not even like the, the kind of choir that she would expect me to be behind which would be not being funny but being more of a caribbean choir or from okay. a black church yeah yeah you know what i mean yeah it's just a community choir of normal people and they are sounding the way they're sounding yeah yeah and do her way yeah. totally blew her away yeah. yeah which I think was part of the the magic of the whole experience and I mean I remember um thinking when when you all started singing and you were in white and I was thinking now that's an interesting choice because you've got these brilliant black t-shirts you've got one on today black t-shirt with a um, gold on it and you're all wearing white and there's not very many of you and it's it's really lovely that you've got all your family there, but I, I'm not sure this is going to showcase the big thing. And then <laughs> from everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, yeah. these people yeah. wearing bright colours and they did not stop coming. Yeah, <laughs> everyone, I mean, we talk about the word rise, the whole auditorium literally were full of yeah. rising. Yeah big singers absolutely yeah. incredible tv amazing yeah yeah we were really happy with the impact it made they really yeah. the power of that yeah yes. you know it was one of those moments mm. even just for us to see it happen we yeah, knew what was, but... we planned it but just to see them all popping up at certain points in the yeah. song yeah. and more and more of them it was overwhelming for us yeah just what so the judges they were on their feet yeah they had their mouths open they absolutely loved it and I just love that the cameras caught that moment yeah, because it, it really was yeah, like that it was yeah. a really special moment it really was yeah 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 um so do you now get an opportunity to go back how does it work now oh it's that... all it's all a wait and see process okay wow <laughs> we're back yeah. to that room Howard with the lock yeah back to that room oh that no way. <laughs> the door's locked for now. Yeah. <laughs> for now, you see. For now. It's that, for yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, for now. Um, wow, how exciting. What I'm loving as well is particularly on social media, seeing your individual choir members and their um, retelling of what happened and um, their journey of the, the big sing and how they felt about it. And I think that is one of the keys to the big sing, isn't it? That it is big, it is huge, but actually you care about every single person that goes to the big sing yeah. and yeah. as much yeah. about them as the whole yeah. family, which is incredible yeah. because big choirs like that, you can often get lost. Of course, um, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, we uh, we yeah. just want to make everyone feel valued, um, yeah. because it, the quiet is for them, and yeah. you know we still hear those same stories that we heard in the beginning days of how yeah, people yeah. use quiet to get through all their problems, the troubles of life, yeah. and that's what's important for us. You know, <laughs> we want to really make sure that we home in on the individuals and make yeah. sure that they are getting what they need from the choir, not yeah. just music, not just singing, but the community. Yeah, yeah. Do you have any anonymous? Um, stories of of someone that you've really seen rise through the big sing oh yeah loads we've got absolutely loads I mean one lady she lost her son a few years ago this was before she joined the choir and he was only young I think he you know late teens and um she found the choir just just after that and she joined just to try and do something to get through her grief and the choir has helped her through that grief journey Mm. and her confidence was at an all-time low when she joined you know she would only just about come to rehearsals and um you know she sang up Britain's Got Talent and her family have told her how the choirs helped her grow in confidence helped her change helped her to live life again um and when they came to saw to see her in the in our Christmas shows they said to her that's it we, we can see you again you're back with us wow Um, and so that's been an amazing journey for her and just hearing that just makes us feel like we've really contributed to helping her through that process which must have been absolutely horrendous for her yeah Yeah. um but there's also people that have come through cancer treatments so um they've joined the choir while they're going through treatments and the doctor have said what are you doing because whatever you're doing it's helping your recovery wow. and they just say we're singing that's what we're doing and mm, you know yeah. we've heard that story mm. quite a few times yeah, yeah 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 um yeah so there's loads of stories yeah 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 choirs are I mean choirs as a whole are on the rise aren't they I think for all the damage and it was untold um that Covid did uh it did put a lot of creative things on the rise people realized that actually um they could have a kitchen disco they could sing their favorite songs on their own they could um join a, a zoom call and and uh you know chat with other people about creative stuff and yep. um i think it did release something in people that you know, even like the bread making and all that kind of thing, it released something in people where they, I guess maybe they weren't so on show. It was all behind closed yeah. doors, wasn't it? And and yeah. so people were just creative in their own in their own way. Yeah. How did you, what did your apart from the big thing? What kind of things did your family do over lockdown? What did you get up to? Well, actually. Um... <laughs> Our daughter, Evie, she's 17. She got into um, upcycling um, oh, cool. and it would have been something that she'd never had time to do before because <laughs> yeah, yeah. we were yeah. just too busy. But now she had time. She painted cabinets and all different yeah. types of furniture and yeah. started selling them. Yeah, we all got involved, actually. Uh, yeah, we all did. <laughs> we all got involved all got in that. Involved. Yeah, so we'd get the cabinets, look online, and these cabinets didn't look much when yeah, we yeah. bought them. By yeah. the time we finished... The painting, I did my spec, my little bit to it. Yeah. Gemma did her bit to it. Yeah. And it was beautiful. We made like yeah. we made like cocktail cabinets, cocktail cabinets. and wow. you know, all different wow. colours and stuff. And it was just great to have something else to focus on because, yeah. you know, obviously the choirs we were when we were thinking about that all the time, it, it can kind of make you go a bit mm. panicky. Yeah, yeah. About what's Cabin happen. fever, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it just gave us something else to think about yeah. and just distracted us from what was going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But for Evie as well, because she was doing homeschooling and she was just in her room doing homeschool all the time. And at the time she was working for her GCSEs. So it was quite a lot of pressure for them, for the kids. So it just gave her something to do that wasn't that. Yeah. you know it just helped to de-stress and just focus on something else yeah. so yeah that was our little yeah, thing little up thing. cycling that was good that's very cool that's very cool um we always have a, a little challenge on the podcast for for the listeners so I think um the challenge this this time definitely has to be what is your creative outlet what do you do to release um those feelings of maybe hopelessness or despair or joy um and uh if you love singing do you know if there's a big sing near you have you 
popped online to have a look and if the big sing aren't near you uh, is there another choir that you could join don't just listen to this podcast and enjoy the brilliantness of Gemma and Howard um have a think about a creative outlet Gemma Howard have you got any um advice on how they can get singing or creative yeah definitely so definitely join a choir so if there's a big sing near you go over to our website big hyphen sing dot com and find out our locations but even if there isn't a choir yeah a big sing near you find Find a choir choir. yeah Yeah. just go and sing because (laughs) singing is so good for you really and there's so so many amazing choirs across the country yeah all different genres of music and that's the great thing about music you can just pick what one suits you yeah 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 so if you're listening obviously we're going to put all this stuff in the show notes as well but um, do get in touch with me or get in touch with, with Gemma and ask about um, choirs and don't be worried about doing it. I don't know about you two, but I always have new people in my community choir. And the first thing they say is, I can't really sing. And yes. then they just stay for years and years and become part of the family and they can sing and they sound amazing. But it's always that yeah. bit, isn't it? Where they feel like they've got to yeah. confess. Yeah. <laughs> but they can't yeah, sing yeah. put me at the back I can't <laughs> sing and I'm always say not bothered <laughs> just mm, yeah that's right come be part of the yeah, this, family the same happens to us like yeah, people yeah, come yeah. and they say oh I've not done any singing I was chucked out the school choir yeah, 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 that yeah. um but it's the same you know you just come give it a try you're yeah. never going to be made to sing, sing by yourself you're yes. you've got the power of community behind you you're in a group of people and yeah. together we just achieve achieve great things yeah, just come yeah, yeah. Part and, of it. and i think also laughter having fun in yes. the choir yes does absolutely so much yeah, yeah you achieve more than you think your children just through yeah. the laughter yeah and before you know it you're singing these harmonies yeah. you know what i mean that's that's what we find anyway yeah. in our choir yeah, and yeah. So do it with laughter and fun, then you'll go yeah. really far. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. You're going to be really busy now. That's it. <laughs> Have loads and loads <laughs> and loads of people. Listen, we've nearly come to the end of the podcast. Um, and we've come to the part where I write you a little on the spot poem. Now, full um disclosure, I've written a little bit already because I couldn't help it, but it's not <laughs> finished yet. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna take uh couple of seconds rise lift your eyes to the skies once more and soar as before but this time desire more aspire more require more and look back and notice that some of these words contain the word rise what can you do who are you on a good day or a bad day when you feel that you've fallen take hope look to the skies and rise hey. yeah. <laughs> there you go love it well when I got to the word fallen I was thinking oh I, I don't I don't know what to do now <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> brilliant. That's great. Uh, Gemma, Howard, it's been fantastic to talk to you. We look forward to seeing the next part of the Britain's Got Talent journey, whether it is just that the choirs grow and grow and grow and you are known forever as a really inspirational <laughs> act, or whether you go all the way. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> uh, Let's see. Thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to us. Is there anything else that either of you want to say before we finish? Um, no, we just want to encourage everybody just to, you know, go out there and achieve something great. And, you know, this has been a great chat today. So thank yeah. you so much thank for having you. us. And Rhea, everyone rise. Just yeah, rise. rise. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. Thank okay. you. Seen it all. Every step is on the air I'm with so confused we don't understand Feels like it's night on air It's gonna be
sing. 